from shamelessly stealing another YouTuber's personality. Welcome guys to my house tour video. Come on in. Welcome to my house. To blatantly copying other scripts. Do just enough to not get fired. Put in the bare minimum. Just enough not to get fired. Here are the eight biggest copycats in YouTube history, starting with the most famous copycat, Brent Rivera, who would release a unique video on October 22nd, 2022, pretending he was a food critic, earning over 40 million views and 2.5 5 million likes. I have a notebook and I'm gonna go to a fancy restaurant, act like a food critic to see if they treat me any differently. But the public perception would change 10 days later when a smaller YouTuber, Josh Slavin, calmly called him out. You know you've made it when a creator with over 100 million social media followers takes inspiration from one of your videos. I've got a notebook and I'm gonna go to a fancy restaurant and act like a food critic. Let's see if they treat me any differently. Despite Josh claiming Brent credited him, many started questioning the YouTuber for the originality of his videos, including another creator named Tyler Oliveira, who after seeing two women portraying the Shining Twins confronted him. I was in the middle of a fake YouTube prank. I wanted to see if Brent would admit it because we all know his videos are fake and he steals everyone's ideas. I have a question. Yeah. Do you fake your videos? No. Do you fake your videos? Nevertheless, Brent would continue to steal from others, forcing another YouTuber named Dabby to expose him. Wow, I really call out creators, but Brent Rivera is a plagiarist. For the video I got to work on with Falchuk, Brent copied the idea, title, thumbnail, hotel, story elements, also revealing the numerous YouTubers he copied from, including Matthew Beam and Airrack. Brent, uh, if, stop stealing, or at least admit in the video that you're stealing it outright so that people feel better. It, it, or just don't take from smaller creators. But if Brent's game were to copy from smaller creators, the Stokes twins started the same way before upgrading to stealing from a much more famous name. During the 2020 pandemic, the Stokes twins would upload a video titled The Problem with Online Classes. All right, everyone, welcome to your first day of online class. Now, when I call your name, click the space bar so I know your presence. Uh, Andrew? Lexi? Um, uh, Alex? Very good. Leading a smaller YouTuber, Charles the French, to share its uncanny resemblance to a video he posted a month earlier. Welcome to this online class. Click present when I call your name. Uh, Jack? Okay. Peter? Okay. Charles? Present. Okay. Despite the backlash, the Stokes twins leveled up their theft by releasing another video on July 24th, 2021. Today, we're going back to kindergarten. We'll be joining an actual kindergarten class with three kindergartners and a kindergarten teacher. Which was strangely similar to what Mr. Beast did three years ago. Today, me and the crew are going back to first grade. And another one. Today, we're doing a 24-hour Lathley Tesla wins $10,000. Which was also a ripoff. Last one of you to leave this car gets to keep it. Worse, they also copied Mr. Beast's channel banner, leading other YouTubers to investigate further. But the weird thing I find about these this copied um, thumbnail, he actually copied the background of Mr. Beast's video because you can see the Pikachu right here and you can see around the pictures of um, Elon Musk in the back. And then right here, it's a stretched version of Mr. Beast's thumbnail with the Pikachu and the Elon Musk in the back, but they photoshopped them into a car. Stokes twins are like the definition of a student that never studied, but have many friends that are smart, so they just ask for the answers. But if the Stokes twins were exposed for copying Mr. Beast's execution up to the packaging, SS Sniper Wolf would be caught stealing an entire personality. On April 10th, 2020, SS Sniper Wolf would accuse Canadian YouTuber Azzyland of stealing her identity. She has been copying my videos slash thumbnail style slash the way I talk for years, like she's trying to convince people she's me. She would even come to the point of throwing shade at Azzyland. Remember to always be yourself, unless you suck. Then pretend to be somebody else. And that's on Azzyland. Leading fans to side with her. But that would change three years later, when Azzy came forward to reveal who the real copycat was. She created the narrative that you had cloned her yeah. when it was the other way around. It turned into taking every idea that did well, but because they had more following than me, uh, their video would just get more views and so people would see their video first and then assume that their video was first. One of the many videos a Sniper Wolf copied from Azzy was released on December 31st, 2018. Welcome guys to my house tour video. Just six months later, Sniper Wolf released hers wearing a similar dress. Welcome to my house. 
Nevertheless, Sniper Wolf denied the accusations, but fans didn't believe her anymore. So the dates of the uploads mean absolutely nothing to you? She uploaded first, then you. How are you missing that point? But if Sniper Wolf stole someone's identity, Jake Paul's strategy would be to target trending content. On October 22nd, 2017, Jake Paul would release a video featuring his ex-girlfriend, Saxon Charbino. And now guys, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm on the way to my uh, ex-girlfriend's house. Well, this well, is awkward. Yeah. But it's fine. At least we're communicating now about it. But four days later, another famous YouTuber, Shane Dawson, would reveal that Jake copied the video idea. So here's the thumbnails. As you can see, they look very similar. Both are called, well, his is called The Conversation with My Ex-Girlfriend. Mine's called Confronting uh, My First Love. Both in a car, both talking. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it was just a coincidence. But it's not. He would explain why Jake chose to copy him. Here's what I think happened. I think Jake Paul doesn't know who I am. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. I think he saw us on the trending page, number one. And react to his video. Jake, if you're watching, this is the point of the video. He's when, not gonna watch it. <laughs> when, <laughs> you, when you steal somebody else's concept, which is fine, it's YouTube. Everybody does it. Uh, you have to throw in a little, like, I saw, I saw somebody named Shane do this, and uh, you know, his was, his was pretty cool, so I'm gonna do it myself. That's what I do. This led the internet to despise Jake. Jake Paul is just a constipated, drowned rat. Nothing more, nothing less. I wish the lowlife the best because where he is going, it will end. Money doesn't last forever as well as subscribers. But if Jake didn't bother to respond to the copycat allegations, Asmongold, a World of Warcraft YouTuber, would single-handedly destroy his accuser. On April 30th, 2020, a smaller WoW YouTuber, Vaulty, would claim that Asmongold copied his video idea in a now-deleted video. I I found something quite odd. An Asmongold video that recently got posted is almost an exact copy of a video that I made on my second channel. Forcing the accused YouTuber to address everything in a 33 minute video three days later. I want to say one thing. I, don't, I honestly I don't really watch this guy's videos. I didn't copy his idea. Like, it's just, just, it's just not true. Backing his claim by first making fun of Vaulty's petty claim that they mentioned the same server. So I was browsing the classic WoW server list and I came across something quite interesting. Look at this server, Lucifron PVP. Look at Lucifron. Wait, so saying look at Lucifron is me copying you? So if I say look at Lucifron, that's me copying him. I can't believe I've been exposed like this, guys. And pointing out the obvious reason behind their similar game activities. Once again, another thing that happened in my video. So I go around and check out any characters I can find. Of course, this happens in Asmongold's video as well. What do you think that you're gonna do on a dead server? But the most shocking part was when Asmongold turned the tables. Let me go back to uh, Asmongold dead server. So let's see, WoW server's dying. This is me doing it four months ago. And let's see, servers are dying. This is me doing it uh, six months ago. So if anything, he copied me. This is how to correctly defend yourself. Not a scene, not a scandal, no name calling, no legal threats, just a simple sit down, son. But if Asmund Gold was praised for the way he cleared his name, Minecraft YouTuber Stevie would be hated for trying to dodge the accusations by pointing fingers at other creators. On March 20th, 2021, Stevie, known for uploading five times a day, would release a video of his character exploring the Cursed Desert Temple, which earned 2.7 million views. But a year later, a Reddit user exposed him. My post, which was a video of me navigating a cursed desert temple, was created March 16th, 2021. It was my most successful post I have ever made, and it was featured on the Phoenix SC subreddit. The similarity is glaring, other than Stevie's video being lesser quality. This inspired more victims to come forward. Mumbo Jumbo, another Minecraft YouTuber with 9 million subscribers, would point out that Stevie stole his self built bridge idea. The build is an exact copy, block for block. I don't put up world downloads for this exact reason, but that doesn't stop someone pausing the video and recreating it, which on a smaller build like this would take 15 minutes, leading the accused YouTuber to delete his video. With more accusations surfacing, Stevie finally released a response video titled End of Stevie's Career Exposed. But instead of actually addressing the allegations, he only made up lies about his accusers. Every idea is a reworking of some old idea. 
every YouTuber who exposed me also stole ideas from others. When you are so ish at defending yourself, you literally start lying and making the other creators the bad guys. In the end, Stevie's reputation was permanently tarnished. Much like only Jayus, whose downfall was caused by her direct plagiarism. On August 7th, 2024, already controversial TikToker only Jayus would be called out by a smaller TikToker, Everyday Alex, for copying his content. Look what they just did. When you get a new job, do just enough to not get fired. Put in the bare minimum, just enough not to get fired. And then after about six months or when a new position opens up, make a sudden drastic change. In like six months or whenever a new position opens up, you're gonna kick it into high gear. Start coming in early, grind really hard, offer to take work home. You're coming to work early, you're gonna ask to bring like work home. Many agreed with him. I think the saddest thing about this is that she has no personality of her own. She just takes from other people and uses it. She's literally as plain as white bread and desperately searches for an identity to use so she's not completely inconsequential. But just a day later, a leaked screenshot of only JS's response surfaced. This guy is claiming I stole his content, but we used the same Reddit page and read off of it, prompting Alex to come up with a deal. I am offering $10,000 to charity right now if she can send me the reddit post while waiting for an answer he released a five minute compilation of only js stealing scripts from other creators today i'm going to be teaching you how to fake your own death how to fake your own death immediately start paying off all your debt you're also going to want to pay off all of your debt this ensures that no debt collectors will come looking after you it's going to ensure that no debt collectors come looking for you forcing the accused tiktoker to finally show the evidence on a now deleted live stream on the screenshot it's this one right here of a Reddit post, of a Reddit comment, and I took this screenshot March 20th, 2020 at 7 24 p.m. The proof, however, would be debunked shortly after. She doctored a screenshot. We did some digging and we found that that deleted post is not the script. We used the script in the screenshot and saw that she commented it. Only Jayus is a prime example of what a con artist scumbag is. But if Only Jayus' style was to benefit from other scripts, Alex Warren would literally make himself a clone of a popular YouTuber. On January 16th, 2020, Alex Warren posted a video where he talked about his plan to surprise a friend. Okay guys, so I've been wanting to do this for a really long time. Me and Patty go way back. He was one of the first people in my vlogs. I want to do something nice because I always make fun of him for having a really sh phone, so I bought him a brand new iPhone 11. It wouldn't be a part of my vlog if I just handed it to him. So I talked to Papra and Calvin who were going to break the phone, and then surprise him with a new one. And while the video seemed harmless, fans immediately recognized the familiar mannerisms. Hey guys, this is kind of a stupid and random idea, but I've always wanted to do this. So I have a hunch that Snapchat is throwing me a surprise birthday party. So David does this thing where he talks where he always sounds like he's about to laugh and lets out a little chuckle, but resumes to talking normally. This guy does the same thing. Soon after, other content creators discovered it wasn't just the mannerisms. If you take one look at the thumbnails and titles for both of their videos, you'll see that Alex is directly copying it. This is not a personality trait, this is just copying. That's what it is. Leading to one of back then David's friends, YouTube barber Jeff Wittick, to confront Alex. Okay, first things first, I want to talk about copying David. And I just don't understand why you would copy him and not somebody cool like me or Todd. You can copy anybody, you know? Why him? You were making me so nervous right now. I grew up watching Logan, David, Tanner, and all that stuff, and I really resembled with David. I was heavily inspired by his format. But regarding the content itself, it's like I do come up with my own bits. The internet, however, knew he was lying. I would have respected Alex more if he would have just admitted that he loves David and wants to make his vlogs just like his. That would make more sense than denying it, which would be proven by the lie detector test. Did you steal David's personality? No. Completely. No. Survey says that's a lie. Do you fake your laugh to make it sound exactly like David's on your vlogs? No. Lie. That's lie. a lie. Yeah. Finally pushing Alex to admit the truth. Yeah. It's like I'm not afraid to say that like bits have happened where I'm where I've blatantly copied David. Mm -hmm. But it's just it happens to be that everyone thinks all of them are. When in the case, a lot of the things I've done, David has not done. Proving that he's one of the worst copycats in YouTube history.